I'm Chief Angus Chukwemeka. I'm a Nigerian, a British, of course. Uh, I was born in Nigeria on the 16th of November 1942. I came in here as a young student in the late 60s to study electrical engineering. I went to grammar school, Okreke Grammar School, and then went to Federal Emergency Science School uh, to do, um, to prepare for engineering. I did maths, uh, I did some engineering subjects, maths and physics. And then the idea at that time, it was a special program for Nigeria to train engineers. So it was like, that's why it was called Federal Emergency Science School. Um, they used to go to around the, uni the secondary schools and grammar schools to recruit students who, are, who they feel have the knack to do engineering. <laughs> so, um, so I benefited from it, of course. And then, when I finished, I was posted in in um, telecommunication school, you know, Shodi in Lagos, uh, because mm -hmm. I was coming to do electrical electronics engineering. I was just there purely to have work experience. And then, before I came over here. It was... Um, it was then that I've done, I have already done a year there, and the war started. And of course, with the war starting, that cut off my, my grants. My grant was cut off, and I wasn't really uh, able to maintain myself. I mean, so many people were affected, uh, those men, mainly the Igbos. Um, it was then that I came down here to Liverpool and then continued my engineering program. I was working, had to work in the night and then study in the day. This is something that when I mention it to people, they, they can not believe it, but that is true. I had to study in the night and quite a few of us affected actually. Initially, yes, obviously, you will. Um, people would would uh, look at you and they will doubt your capability and your ability. Even though you're qualified, you have your, your degrees, have your certificates. But it's when you are doing the job that they know that you are equal to the task as well. Uh, and and then you'll be uh, obviously be accepted, but uh, there is no doubt. Um, initially, it's difficult. To what, what were some of these problems? I think the initial problems, again, is really getting for interview. Obviously, well, the council situation is. Different. I, I, I was. I went to the council in 1980. That was when I went into the council. At that time, um, I was also involved when I was still, when I was working. I was also involved in community activities. I was involved with race relations. Um, so I, the Liverpool situation is something that is different because it's something that affected black people as a whole in the city. Um, the number of black people in the council then were really uh, something that is pathetic when you think that is roughly 0.01%. Uh, I think I I've forgotten the figure, probably one in a thousand. You know, when the population of the black, pop, black people here in the city, that time more than 
and they have really one about one percent, and and the type of jobs they were doing at those in those days were lab, they were laboring rope cleaners, uh, those who were working for the council then was mostly people who used to sweep the roads at that time. Um, and now you have you have machines that do it, but in those days. Men were doing it, and they were mostly black people. We used to see them in the city centre with their trolleys and brooms sweeping the roads. Um, there were very few professionals in the council at the time, and that is why really it became a very big drive in the black community. It's something that we thought um, needed addressing because. Um, there was this high unemployment among black people, especially in Liverpool. Yet, uh, they, you have a, a, they, one of the largest employers. Um, you pay your rates, you do everything, and yet you don't have black presence. Uh, it was really um, a very sad, a sad situation at the time. I enjoyed working with the council, obviously. Uh, you have problems, there's no doubt, but I left because um, I took an early retirement. I wanted to give something back to the community uh, because obviously I am, um, as my, I was involved in community work. At the same time, I was also working uh, professionally um, I've been, I was, at one time I was the, the chairman of our Asian Caribbean Standing Committee. The other Africans, Asians and the Caribbeans had an umbrella group. I chaired it for many years. I um, set up the Merseyside African Council and um, chaired it for many, many years. The Igbo, the Nigerian and so on. And also, I was involved with the Community Relations Council. I don't know if you know, we have eventually the name was changed to Race Equality Council. Um, it was just a body then that addressed race issues uh, in the city um, and all over the country, actually. Uh, it was funded by, jointly by the Liverpool City Council and the Commission for Racial Equality. So I think at some point uh, they closed them all down. Uh, but at that time, um, they addressed all the, if you have any race issues, discrimination, whether it's in work or in housing or anything, you, you, you can report to bring it to the Community Relations Council or the Council for Racial Equality, um, which was based in 64 Mount Pleasant at the time. They would then obviously compile a report, and then take the matter up. <laughs> if you were here in the 80s, um, Liverpool was a very vibrant, uh, this area, Tuxted was really a very vibrant area. You probably had up to 12 clubs. Um, you have the, uh, the Caribbean centre, you had the Jamaican centre, the Jamaican club, you had you have the Yoruba club, you had the Igbo club, you had the Sri Lankan club, you have the Ghana club, you have the Federal club, you have the Alaram Club, we have but even... Most of them are dead now, why? Dead, yeah, all of them are gone now. Why? What happened? Well, there are two reasons. I mean, for instance, the, what, what the council called green, uh, green, uh, green area policy, whatever, uh, they, they didn't, most, most of the clubs weren't allowed to operate because residents were, um, Obviously, we are complaining about noise, and the council actually didn't want these clubs to to operate, and had to close them down. And um, most of those areas are now residential areas. Uh, for instance, in um, 
the Sierra Leone Club used to be in, um, um, you know, where you used to have the law center, uh, just around there. The Ibo Club used to be in 54 Princess Road. Now, it's, um, we have um, a development by, um, I think, Liverpool Housing Trust. So this is how most of those houses were taken over by the council by compulsory purchase. And then, of course, they, were, they, are, now, they are now living accommodations. Awesome.